Hi, this is Angela with Dogwood Paper Arts. Welcome to my channel. So today I want to show you my new um, paper pack, my new digi kit that will be in Etsy by the time this airs. Um, I don't have them divided up into whether or not they'll be kit one and kit two or if I can all get them all into one kit. <clears throat> I have to put them into zip files and then I'll know um, how much I how, how many will be if it'll be a whole kit or if it'll be two. Um, usually they end up in two kits because you can only have so many megabytes in each file and Anyway, all that aside, I do have two new kits here. Two new, one full, well, let's just go and I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what it is. The first one I'm going to show you is my, I can't decide what to call it yet. Um, Azure Bouquet is what I have it called right now. Um, Azure is like a blue, isn't it? Um, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it might be called Azure Meadows. I don't don't really know yet. So this is the first page, and this is a journal kit. And these are the foldy pages. So that is page one. You see that? Yeah, okay. This is page two. And they have little bluebirds and stamps and pictures. And this one just has some little frames that you can write in. I tried to leave some writing space on each page. You know, like you can write in the background or perhaps along here. And then whatever you put on the back, of course, um, will leave you a lot of writing space. So um, anyway, these are just the pretty decorative pages. So that's page two. Here is page three and it has some roses and some little birds and a big bunny rabbit. And I put in an iron gate here and a fence here. And then in the background you can see that there's a house back in there. So that's three. This is page four. Pretty, isn't it? It's uh, an old book, and I am a member with the Graphics Fairy, and so I get a lot of my images from there. I also gather a lot of images from the New York Library Digital. You have to make sure you click on the copyright free, free for use um, images because they have a lot that are in collections that are not free for use. In fact, as a note, side note on that, always go back and check if it's been a couple months because sometimes they get put into a collection and then they are no longer copyright free and free for use. So just a side note there for those of you that do this. Anyway, um, that's that one. I uh, originally printed out my kit and realized that I forgot to put my shadow effects in, you know, the little shadows that are... And my printer made a mistake here, so had to clean the print heads again. So anyway, these do have the little shadows in them, like the sun might be shining. And so I, I got that put in. Lots of flowers, birds, butterflies, um, backgrounds. Um, I really try to layer up most of my prints. See here you can see the little shadow under the butterfly. And uh, I, I tried to really put a lot of layers in them but you know some some have more than others and some have tons and tons of stuff. So this is the seventh one. I love this one. Absolutely love it. 
love the honeycombing in the background and stuff. I just think it's so pretty. And then there is this one. And this is the end of the main decorative pages the, of the kit. Some hydrangeas and lilacs and um, bleeding hearts. And then I made these for backgrounds. Now this one, although it's this orangey pinky color, it has the bluebirds in it. So that's what made me kind of stick with the blue color. So that's a, I, I'm, I have decorative backgrounds this time. There's that one. And here's this one. I love this one. And then here is this one. And then there is this one. It's just a pretty plain ledger sheet with some more of the blue on both sides. And then I have a few pages of, oh gosh, my computer was putting lines through. The lines won't won't be in yours unless they already had pre-lines in them from something that's in the background. Um, anyway, here are the tags. This one has the shape tags and then it has one that has um, curved corner tag all the way around. And this one has two belly bands and um, some butterflies, just butterfly images. You can cut these out as journaling, a journaling card here and here, or a pocket insert, or you can cut the butterflies out. Now these two um, are pretty small, so you would want to cut those out and use them probably. But I have two belly bands here. And these right now are just printed on regular, um, what is it, 25 pound or 28 pound copy paper, um, a bright white. And then this one has a journaling card, a tag. This black spot won't be in yours. This was my printer again, being naughty. And then I have this um, little booklet that you fold in half. You could put lace along the edge if you wanted. But it measures three and a half inches this way by five. Or five and a half, something like that. Let's see. Five and a half, yeah. Five and a half tall by, or, sorry, tall by three and a half wide. But you just cut it out and fold it and put your little papers inside. And then this, like I said, is just a journaling card and um, another tag. This is just a squared up tag. So it could be a journaling card or a pocket insert. And then I have these two pockets. This light blue shows where you fold it and um, glue it down. You'll probably want to, you know, clip the edges a little bit. But, and then I put two little journaling cards here that are four by three and a half. And these pockets are four and a half by three and a half. Hopefully these will fit in them. They might have to be trimmed down a little bit. So there is this kit, the Azure Blue. Um, these will be on my Etsy when this video airs. And I am really excited about them. I'm, I love them, that's for sure. And then my other kit is this will probably be in two kits. Let's see if I can separate it out here a little bit. 
This is my French documents kit. It feels like there's one stuck to that one. Yep, there is. There it is. Okay, so let's put that one over there. This might be two or three kits. I'm not sure yet. I, there's a lot of pages. So these are all um, French documents. And this is like, this was a marriage certificate. And I printed front and back. I'm not sure if this is the one that goes with this one or not. Probably not because it will would have been a facing page to it. So it might be this one. Yes, be this one. So we have a marriage document. And these are copies. Let me turn it this way. Let's see. How can we do this? The documents are really large. Um, so um, when I scan them, I scan them down to the eight and a half by 11. And you can see that they take up nearly a full page. And I did um, crop as close to the document as I could without cropping into the document. You know, cropping on the, on the um, program. So we have a marriage document here. There's two of those. These are, like I said, front and back. And then here's this one. It's, um, I'm not sure what this one is. So that's four pages. Um, these two do not go together. This is 182 and this is 160 something. The uh, scanning even picked up the uh, beautiful textures in the papers. It's not textured here, but you can see it. Um, because the old papers are just, they just feel so good. Oh, this one goes with this one. It doesn't really matter. Um, they're still going to be French documents. Most of us probably can't read them anyway. But they are very pretty. So two, four, six. Um, I don't know. Anyway, here's two more. So that's eight. Maybe that one doesn't have a back to it. So nine of those. That might just be a document by itself. So nine of the documents. And these here are receipts. And you can see that now on these, I copied once again both sides. Let me show you on this one, because I know it goes together. On one side of it is the document, and all the lines and crisscrosses through it, you can see that that is where they had the document folded, and they mailed it right in the, in the paper. Just folded the paper up and mailed it to whoever they needed to mail it off to. This is um, 1864. These are all very old. So that is a very cool one in blue. And then um, this one must go where? Not with that one. I think it might go with. No, nope. don't really know which ones they go with. I, you know, it probably doesn't matter. But you can see how they're folded and, and um, anyway, very cool papers. This is the receipt side. 
And here is another one that's on the receipt side. Um, let's see. Can't read it. It's in the wrong language. These are both 1864. Now you can see the receipt through this one. These were um, pretty thin, but just to give you an idea, this is the mailing address here on this side, and it was just, you could just see the receipt right through it, no matter how you looked at it. Um, let's see. I'm not sure the date on that one. 1864. Okay. I am sure of the date. And there's this one. You can see they had the wax seal on them that um, kept them together. Sealed it. And they're blank on the back. You can run them, you know, side by side if you want. They'd make great inserts in a journal. Here's this one. Isn't that beautiful? And this one. This one is also 1864. But you can see where they've been stamped by the post office. And um, Oh, hey, here's that sheet to that one. There it is. So there's that. I'm going to put this one back over there. There's 10 of those, I guess. And I don't like remember how many I counted here, but this will probably be a, a documents one and receipts will be one. And then I have this one. This is more French um, ephemera. These are envelopes. This was a window envelope, but the envelope was very dark. And so you can see that there's an impression of a window there. So you could cut that out and turn and put some cellophane in it or something. Um, let's see. This is 1933 and um, I don't know what the date on that one is. Uh, some of these I, are resized. Um, just so that I could get them all on a page so they could be used for like journaling cards or um, something like that. 1862 maybe? 1858? 1868 maybe? Yeah. And then these are like... Um, I don't know if they're called bank uh, documents or receipts or or what. I'm not sure, but I have a whole bunch of those, and these are also printed front and back because on the back you get so much interesting um, writing and stuff. And these are not scanned clear to the edge. I mean, I could do them that way, but. I didn't want to risk losing any of them on, you know, any of the beautiful paper. And so these are um, 1876, I think. All different kinds of dates on them. There's three pages to it and four, five, five pages to this one. Oops. So, um, anyway, just 1847 here. And this one's going this way. But the writing is just so beautiful. And wouldn't these make beautiful journal cards or fold over? You could fold them in half and have the journaling on the inside. Very neat. And this is the last page. So that 
my friends, are my new kits. This one has five pages in it. This one had, what did we say, eight? One, two... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yep, eight with that one. It's receipts. Plus, I think there's one of these in there. Um, and then we have what was in here? Ten. This will be another one that'll be just documents. And then we have the Azure Blue Kit. And I love, love, love that one. And so, anyway, I hope that you um, enjoyed this. And I hope you'll stop by and check out my kits. And see if you're interested. A um, lot of fun to make. I absolutely love making them. They are not easy. Let me show you how many printouts I have done for this. This many. Woohoo! Just to get it right. To get the colors right, to get the shapes right, to get my printer to work right. Um, if I can, I will include this as an extra. It's the booklet, but it has the... Uh, um, here, here, this one's better. The booklet but it has the lace on it I could get it on one sheet of paper without the um, pieces coming apart but I couldn't move this from here onto another sheet yet this was a little journaling card I made um, I didn't like it this picture got really tidy and then on this one, she was in the wrong shape. And then on these, um, this one has the shadowing in it. But the birds were wrong, so I had to resize the birds and, um, you know, just keep doing a little bit more work. Maybe rearrange flowers, maybe rearrange the stamps. Um, colors were really dark in these, so I had to go back and lighten them up. Just a lot of, a lot of issues. So these are dark, very dark. And this had some flowers in it that just got really a uh, weird brownish color. So, um, I had to go back and change some of those, um, and throw some different flowers in in front of them to get rid of that dark purple brown and then I lightened up the backgrounds and on this one um, I colored in all of the flowers so that they would be in the blue instead of white and this one I had to keep working with this bird he was just too dark and too little so I had to keep resizing him, and in this one I, I did finally get the shadowing in. I can see it back behind the ferns. Um, so anyway, they are a lot of work when you are... Um, so I'll use these in projects. This one, I had to keep moving the flowers around. Um, this is the one that had the... Um, lilac in it that was too dark. So I have several of those. And I'll um, either print on the back of these or I will use them just in projects. I might use them in that envelope journal I'm working on. This one I was working with this beehive background and getting it figured out. You can see the difference in colors there. Going from, this is a lighter version. This was a too lighter version because I pulled the background out of it. And this is the first 
one of the first ones and there is a butterfly there that was too dark. So I moved him over here, made him look like he was further away. Still didn't like it. So, and this was the very first background it had. It was kind of a painty looking background and it was way too dark as you can see. And this one, the gate came out too dark. So I had to go back in and burnish it up with some more yellow. There's no shadow effects in this one. Um, this was just my initial printout to see if I liked it. Um, a lot of times I'll, I just have to print it and see if I like it. Uh, this is when the birds were squished together. And I think these are olives hanging down here. And it, they just didn't look right. Anyway, they look a lot better now. But I had to keep working with the background on this one too because it was too, too uh, the wrong color. This one, I think, oh, it just doesn't have its background in. I've had to print this one a couple times because the birds, those blue birds, just with the blue in the background, it really changed them. And this just shows um, what you can do to, if you don't print corner to corner, edge to edge. So, but it went from this to this. And actually, um, the first ones are really, really different. So, and then this was just um, my initial printing of the, that's my figuring my, my printer out. This is just the initial printing of the documents and realizing that I uh, needed to scan them in differently to get the um, beautiful um, texture of the papers in it. So, anyway. So that's what happens when you are uh, creating a kit and um, getting ready to put it online. You have to print out lots of pages and you have to keep printing them because they're just not right. And then you finally get it and you're like, yes, yes, they're right now. So anyway, I appreciate you joining me today and I sure hope you all have a great evening. It is evening here and it is a Saturday evening here and these will show up on Tuesday I believe. I have these scheduled and by then all this stuff will be online at yours truly Dogwood Paper Arts on Etsy and I hope you stop by. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.